Deep in the heart of Los Angeles' Little Tokyo neighborhood sits this gift shop, where the shelves are stocked with imported Japanese collectibles and housewares. It started in 1958 on First Street. Changes in the neighborhood have forced Rafu Busan Incorporated to move locations several times, but it's one of the lucky ones. You know, it's just a lot of the changing conditions. A lot of the businesses have closed, the mom and pop ones. Um, so there's, we're one of the four left of legacy businesses in Little Tokyo. The rapidly rising rent in Little Tokyo and nearby Chinatown are taking a toll on residents too. Cost of rentals and uh, cost of housing here is insane. My mom and I were living paycheck to paycheck because of the rent prices. A lot of the original Chinese families and, and business owners have been pushed out in a, in a way. Chinatown was really established not just as a place where it, you know, it was convenient for Asian people, but it was also where people went and got jobs, where they went to temple and churches in the languages that they spoke most predominantly and where they set up small businesses. Once a safe haven for Asian Americans, neighborhoods like Chinatown and Little Tokyo have changed dramatically over the years. Sissy Trin, the executive director of the Southeast Asian Community Alliance, says this kind of gentrification has resulted in the loss of necessary goods and services. So we've lost four grocery stores and two medical providers as a result of gentrification. New developers come in and they refuse to renew leases. And these are businesses that have been paying market rate rents, but they don't bring a certain atmosphere that you know, implies high-end business. The Asian American and Pacific Islander community has been especially impacted by gentrification. A 2016 study by the National Coalition for Asian Pacific American Community Development and Little Tokyo Service Center found that more than half of poor AAPIs live in what are now the nation's hottest and most expensive markets. What we've seen is like more predatory harassment um, by landlords and developers who see this as an opportunity to um, really harass um, low-income um, Asian residents, other immigrants and people of color, um, really by uh, having like poor housing conditions or raising the cost of rent or doing other things like shutting off heat and hot water. Anjan Chaudhry spearheaded an initiative called Our Neighborhoods. Run by National Capacity, it aims to empower Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders by giving them the tools needed to fight against displacement caused by gentrification. For a lot of the low-income community members that are living in the neighborhood, uh, affordability is a big issue. That's because many AAPI households and neighborhoods like LA's Chinatown or Little Tokyo make less than 30% of the area median income. As a result, they're sometimes considered to be too poor by the government to qualify for affordable housing. Because of this, SICA is working on policy changes that are aimed at rewriting rules for affordable housing and new development. Trin says SICA wants these neighborhoods to evolve, but it believes any changes that stem from gentrification shouldn't come at the expense of residents. Oftentimes when we talk about gentrification and development, it's always about like, it brings new jobs, it brings new opportunities. We've seen the exact opposite. We've lost jobs, we've lost opportunities. Um, rents have only skyrocketed, homelessness has only increased, right? And so making sure that our folks get to benefit from new investment, I don't think that's unreasonable. For Newsy, I'm Catherine Beek.